As we begin this video on ellipses, um, I want to show you a little bit from that cool math website we've been looking at. Um, so, as always, we can define a conic section as both how we can slice a cone and in terms of distance. Um, so in this one, they've sliced the cone in a, such a way that um, it's not quite parallel to the base, and it gives us kind of that elliptical shape right there. Um, and then in terms of distance, um, the sum, well, so the, what we've got here is um, the distance from any point on the ellipse to a foci, um, and then the then that same point to the other foci, that remains constant. Okay, so as this point travels around, um, it's d1 plus d2 is always the same. Uh, like, and we'll, in class, we might take some string, and you secure it to two spots, and then you can kind of trace it around um, and to make your ellipse. Okay, so now let's look at some problems. Sorry about that. Okay, I teach it slightly differently than Ms. Deloach does. Um, so um, we're, I'll kind of try and talk through both. Um, the way that this one is set up is HK is still our center. And then what we do, when we go to graph this, we, we start at, um, at HK, and then we move A units along um, in the X direction. Um, and so, and then we move um, K, excuse me, B units along the Y direction. And our vertices are always on, our vertices are always on the major axis. Um, And so it depends if A is bigger, if A is bigger than B, then our major axis would be along the x-axis, um, or uh, it would be horizontal. And so then we could add A to our H value and subtract, um, you know, this will work better if we actually have an, a, a practice problem. The co-vertices are the endpoints of the minor axes, um, and the foci are those points that we saw in the video that um, where we attach the string and the way that I like to think of the foci is that c squared is equal to the absolute value of a squared minus b squared. That way, if b is bigger, we're not getting a negative. And then we move c units along the major axis. Um, when we talk about hyperbolas next, um, the signs change. But what I, one thing I point out is that when there's a plus sign here, there's a minus sign there. Okay? So... Um, Ms. Deloach does it slightly differently. She'll talk about it opens horizontally when A is bigger. She always just puts the bigger value first, okay? And so the bigger denominator first. So if A is bigger, well, she always says A is bigger. And then if, um, then if X squared is the part that comes first, it opens horizontally. If Y squared comes first, it's going to be vertical. Let's, let's jump in and we'll kind of talk through one. Okay, so in this first example here, our center is at the point 4, negative 1. And this one, since the y value is bigger, it's going to have a, a vertical major axis. Okay, and then we move 3 units in the x direction, because that's the square root of 9. And then we move 5 units in the y direction. The length of the major axis, therefore, would be 10. The length of the minor axis would be 6. And c, what I use is... Um, c squared equals the absolute value of a squared minus b squared, which is uh, 9 minus 25 is 16. The, that's a, well, that's a negative 16. Take the absolute value. It's a positive 16. c, therefore, has to be 4. So your c value is 4. Um, so we're going to jump in, and we're going to graph the point 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. These dots are really small. Hang on. 1, 2, 3, 4, negative 1. And then um, we move three units in the x, one, two, three, over there, one, two, three. And then we move five units in the y, one, two, three, four, five, I think I'm in the right spot, one, two, three, four, five. That's our ellipse. And then the um, foci are four units along the major axis, oh, four units away from the center. So one, two, three, four. And then one, it's right here also, because uh, the whole thing was five, so one less. Um, so the foci, then you'll tell me where those points are. So this was the, the value, the x value had an x value of four, 
We had been at negative 1, and then we added 4, so we're at 4, 3. You can also count, but those lines are really tiny. And the other one is at 4, we were negative 1, and we subtracted 4, so negative 5. The vertices are on the major axis, so this is 4, and then we're one more than that, so 4, 4. And the other one is at 4, negative 6. The co-vertices have the, the y value of negative 1, and their x here is, this is at positive 1, negative 1, and the other one is at, well, this was 3 plus 3 more, so 6 away from 1 is 7, so 7, negative 1, and those are the, the co-vertices. Okay, the next one we're looking at here, um, our center is negative 2, negative 2. Um, it's going to be the, the x y is bigger, so this is a horizontally shaped um, ellipse. And then we move 6 units in the x direction and 2 units in the y direction. The major axis, therefore, will be 12 units long. The minor axis will be 4. Um, the c value, okay, so c squared equals the absolute value of a squared minus b squared. We don't really need the absolute value this time. 36 minus 4 is 32. The c squared is 32, which tells us that c is equal to the square root of 32. Well, what is that? 4 root 2. That's not very helpful to know where to plot that point. Um, let's hang on to this for the exact value. Um, but uh, square root of 32, yeah, I knew that. Um, this is what I didn't know. It's about 5.66, whatever. Um, so that'll give us an idea of where we should plot the point. Um, our c value, we said, is exactly 4 root 2. So we've got our, our center, negative 2, negative 2. Then we're moving 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Then we go up 2. Then we go down 2. And this is what our ellipse looks something like. The foci are about 5 and a half units away. Well, this whole thing was 6, so it's somewhere in here. Okay, so when we're graphing it, that's that's close enough. Um, you know, it's about there. But then when we write down what the foci are, um, what their actual coordinates are, we need to be precise. So we had been at negative 2, and then we added and subtracted 4 root 2. And that's the new x value, and the y value was still just negative 2. So I'm perfectly fine with you putting both of them together. Um, not back here, because if I had said plus or minus, what was the c value is 4. Um, those are actual numbers. You can come up with those numbers. But down here, this is an exact value, and that's what I'd prefer. Um, the vertices, we were at negative 2, and then we moved 6. So we're at negative 8, negative 2. And then we're at, I think this should be 4, negative 2. Um, the co-vertices would be have an x value of negative 2. And then one of them is at 0, and the other one is negative 2, negative 4. Okay, um, hopefully that was helpful. Okay, let's look at um, this one. They're giving us some information and asking us to write the equation of it. Find the equation for the ellipse with endpoints of the major axis, 10, 2. Um, so this is not the, um, not the origin. So maybe we, I probably, if I had drawn this myself, um, I probably would not have drawn the axes, but there they are. Um, so one of them is at 10, 2 for the major axis and negative 8, 2, so this would obviously be 10, 2, and this would be negative 8, 2. Therefore, this point here is going to be uh, the midpoint of those. When I add the 10 and negative 8, I get 2 divided by 2, so this is a point 1, and it still has got that same y value of 2. Um, the foci are at 6, 2, so somewhere here and negative 4, 2. Okay, not drawn to scale, but whatever. Um, and so then this c value is telling us how far that is right here. So from positive 1 to negative 4, I've gone 5 units. So my c value is equal to 5. My a value, I went from 1 to negative 8. Um, and so that's 9 units. Let's say from 1 to, yeah, which works the same over there. Um, this is horizontal because, well, the, because the foci are on that same um, 
the foci are always on the major axis, and the, they've, we've traveled along that horizontal um, axis for that. The major axis is, what did we say, 18 units long. So if 2a equals 18, a equals 9, state and label the vertices I did over here. Um, find c, we just said that c was 5. State and label the foci, um, I already did. They told us those. Um, and then b squared, so, so what we've got here is that um, c squared equals the absolute value of a squared minus b squared. Well, our c value is 5, so this is 25 is equal to the absolute value of 81 minus b squared. Well, we don't need the absolute values um, because this is going to be, okay, yeah, sorry, <laughs> I'm still waking up. Um, we don't need the absolute values because we know that this is going to be the larger value because A was bigger, so B has to be smaller. Um, and so I'm tired, 81 minus 25, that's 56. So B squared would be equal to 56. Um, okay, so B squared is equal to 56, therefore B is equal to the square root of 56. Um, which is 2 root 14, which is approximately 7.483. Okay, whatever. State and label the center. We already did that. State, state and label the covertices. Well, the covertices have an x value still of 1. Um, and then their y value it was at 2. But this one we added 2 root 14. And this one right here, it still has an x value of 1, and then it was 2 minus 2 root 14, and those are the exact values. Um, so then when it says write the equation, we have the center, so x minus 1 squared. And then how far did we move in the x direction? We went 9, so this becomes um, 81, plus y minus 2 squared over, well, so we... We want b squared, which we already have. So this is 56, and this equals 1 is how that's set up uh, for an ellipse. Last thing we're going to do is we're going to complete the square like we've done in the past. Um, so it's a little bit more involved than in a circle, but here we go. So I'm going to group x's and y's together. And move that over to the other side, minus 532. Oops, I'm running in. Um, and now I'm going to factor out so that I just have x squared. So I have 4 times x squared plus 10x plus a box plus 36 times y squared. Oh, my dividing is sluggish today. And um, when I factor out a 36, this leaves me with 8y plus a triangle because this might not be the same as that, so I use a different variable. Um, and this equals, well, I'm going to kind of avoid, well, I may not graph it. Okay, this equals negative 532 plus 4 times the box, and then plus 36 times the triangle. So then I have 4 times x plus half of 10 is 5, 5 squared, so 25 goes in my box, plus 36 times y minus half of 8 is 4, 4 squared, so 16 goes in my box. So now I have um, negative 532 plus 4 times 25, it's 100, I'm just, uh, plus 36 times 16, and this gives me 144. Okay, now if you remember, the, um, the formula was always, on all these, they were always equal to 1. Um, and that helps you figure out how far to move for the, the x and the y values. So I'm going to come through and divide everybody by 144 so that this equals a 1. And 144 divided by 4 is 36. So this is x plus 5 squared over 36. Um, oh, and look, that's going to reduce. Plus y minus 4 squared over 4 is equal to 1. So the center is at negative 5, positive 4, and then we'd move 6 units in the x direction and 2 units in the y direction, and I wrote all over my graph, um, and we've already practiced a few of those. So the tricky part in this one was, um, was getting to here. I assume the rest of my notes online would have uh, the rest of this worked out, but I'm done. Enjoy!